Good evening and welcome to Plain Talk. My name is Christopher Ram. Thank you for joining me for the next hour as we discuss issues confronting our country. Exxon Mobil contract illegal, irretrievably flawed, and is either the result of grand corruption or grand incompetence. The illegality at the root of the Exxon contract making six licenses into one. For those of you who have been following the Sabbath news, these two headlines would be quite familiar to you. They were authored uh, by the Transparency Institute of Guyana, Inc. As you know, Transparency Institute Guyana, Inc. is the national watchdog anti-corruption body it is linked to the Transparency International, a global NGO. My understanding is that the Transparency Institute has carried out a comprehensive and a critical review of the petroleum agreement signed between the government of Guyana and SO Exploration and Production Guyana Inc., a branch of a company incorporated in one of the Caribbean territories, along with two other companies, also branches of foreign companies. To discuss the articles with me this evening are Mr. Fred Collins to my immediate right and in my immediate left, I'm sorry, <laughs> can't get my left and right correct. And to his left, Dr. Troy Thomas, President of Transparency Institute and um, a colleague from the University of Guyana as well. Gentlemen, welcome to Plain Talk. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Now, these headlines are quite serious. They make grand conclusions. <laughs> are those conclusions grand corruption or grand incompetence? Carefully thought out or is it to shock people into saying, look, we really need to look at this contract, uh, petroleum agreement signed by Trotman on behalf of the APNU AFC government in 2016. Well, um, first of all, we are not the um, we, are, we 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 are not news newspaper types. I think the the, the, the press tends to use um, exaggeration. Um, what we put on those headlines, just what we have. Um, Observed. So the headlines are the, the words of the. Were, 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 because were, were I think chosen. I think they were actually used in the article. Yes, yes, but yes. but but let me finish. Sure. You you have you have focused on the tail end, Trotman and um, the 2016 contract. Yes. What we said is that over a period of 20 years, beginning from 1999, politicians have created this contract. According to Mr. Trotman, it is the same contract. We don't know how that works. <laughs> how the same contract can have two, one, one contract can have um, two parties and uh, the same contract that, that the TLN can have four. four. So, and, and other things about it. From our observation, it is, it is a rickety old sieve masquerading as a, a, a powerful uh, 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 skyscraper of a contract. Um, I, I would say yes, though those uh, headlines are accurate. They're taken actually from the text. Yes. Um, and they do summarize the, the overall position. And we, we, will, we haven't completed the series as yet. We're hoping to, well, we, we're going to develop those points and put all the information out. The grand corruption bit has to do with corruption at high levels um, because we're talking about. Uh, potentially people involved in government, people who um, command a lot of 
uh, resources in the country or manage a lot of resources. It's different from petty corruption, like um, somebody taking a little bribe somewhere to not report something or, or the other. Um, or grand incompetence because of the scale of the whole thing. Um, because of how absurd it looks at the end of the day when you put everything everything together. Um, and that's how we, we arrive at, at that. But uh, let, let, me ampl let me amplify that. Absolutely. Let me amp amplify that uh, incompetence uh, uh, candidate as well. Because we, 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 we can't say which is it. It is somewhere from one to the other or both. For instance, in we, we will point out as we uh, uh, in one of the articles that the number of of blocks, the, the the area, that the number number of blocks, we have been hearing leaders say that it's 600 blocks, right? That was a, based on a miscalculation. Yes. And in the, in the original contract, it said um, 60,000. Actually, said 60,000 square kilometers. Yes. It yes. has become 28,000. Yes, yes. So, who? Now we don't expect leaders to do those calculations themselves. They yes. had to be done by people who back them up in the offices. That's correct. That's correct. Who did those calculations? So when we say uh, it's one or the other, it could also be both. They, they did not have the support. In which case, what are the Guyanese people, what do we think we're paying for, for all these, uh, with our taxation? You, in, in the article of June 6, and um, let me say, you, your, 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 your series to date, trace back to April 28, 2018, yeah. which you refer, us, refer to as your first article. But in your, the article of June 6th, you said that we have come to the conclusion that successive governments have cooperated with foreign private interests over a period of 20 years, beginning 1999 with Janet Jagan, to produce a document which appears to be the result of the grand, either grand corruption or grand incompetence, you're now um, suggesting there could be a further possibility, a mixture of both. Of companies. course. Yeah. When we talk about a single document, is, it, is that correct? Because we're in two documents, one <laughs> in 1999 and one in 2016? <laughs> well, Mr. Christopher Ram, um, I don't know if that's a trick question, because... Uh, I'm transparent, not, I, with, not with you people. <laughs> I, I think you have written, um, and you have dealt with that. Yes. This, 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 this mutation of one contract into another. Mm -hmm. And I don't think even you can figure it out. We don't pretend that we have superior legal, legal analytical skills um, to, to, to you. We cannot understand, but we do know that there were two contracts, one signed in 1999 yes. and one in 2016. But the, we have the words of the uh, current natural resources minister, who is a lawyer, and he says it's the same contract. So we are basing on that. It's a, he, it's said a he said that same lie sitting on the same chair on which you're say, sitting. Oh. And he said it was the same contract. We just tinkered with some little thing. Well, That's I don't not know. correct. Well, I don't know what he you, meant. You I'm just quoting him, sir. I, he said same. Whatever that means. How, we said in our thing, however well, that works. Same, we don't know. Fred, you are very keen on language. <laughs> same can same can't mean two different things. <laughs> maybe they could have maybe, but, maybe they but couldn't as long. you pointed out, the, the parties are different. Mm. Yeah. It couldn't be. But, but I guess um, when you when we think of the Exxon contract, and it's also because of how it has been um, put forward, we think of a contract indeed. But um, I I believe that there I believe it's a different contract in, in 2016. But the way it's it's couched there is just a, it's actually lumping both of them together. Um, so technically speaking, as you're, you're trying to you're pointing out. A, a document is two documents, but we're referring to them as a, a, as one. In that, because in, if, in regardless of what the documents, how the documents have uh, one is turned into the other, what we do have, as you know, a contract is not the paper. Mm -hmm. A contract is the uh, agreement between the two parties. Well, what yes. we have is an agreement that subsists 
at this yes, point in time. Yes, it's called a petroleum time. agreement. Yes. yes. So, so we have two different documents representing an arrangement that exists in now. One arrangement. What I, I think, um, and this program is not only about, it's not about my views, mm. but I sometimes have difficulty in people not acknowledging that they're fundamentally different. Mm. Apart from parties, apart from dates, one was a pre-discovery contract. You didn't know what you had. There was, there was sure. practically no interest in Guyana oil. Well, you hear, I can remember Desmond Hoyt's budgets. He talked about on oil and, um, we, you know, we used to flirt with oil. Mm -hmm. But in 2016, we knew we had yeah. the largest commercial hydrocarbon discovery in 2015. Mm -hmm. We knew that. Yeah. It cannot be that you could relate the two in any way or form. Well it, depends on, well, it depends on what you mean by you cannot relate the two in any way or form. Um, I have heard that claim before, and um, to my mind, it attempts to uh, bring forward and relieve the original, the 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 mis the missteps that were taken, the fundamental missteps, because this is what we're saying, the contract is irretrievably flawed at its root, which was done in 1999, and attempts to focus on the, 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 the current time. While we agree with that, and um, I can, we can see arguments to support that, from our standpoint, we are seeing a contract that, as we're saying, at its very foundation, at its very root, is based on a breaking of the law that there is no way that you can uh, recover from that without doing it over. And it is costing this country so much. Um, the point of the distinction between a pre-contract, when you know there's a... Look, if you know there's all the risk as Winston Jordan, the finance minister said, the whole place had been de-risked. Mm -hmm. Surely the conditions are touching Absolutely. to a high the risk. Conditions Absolutely. Are conditions Absolutely. Are Absolutely. There's no, there is no question about that. Okay. And there's one thing I wanted to, to mention, though, is that when you talked about Hoyt's budget, we will show, we will bring evidence to show that prior... We, uh, in 19, in 19, uh, 1991, we will bring evidence to show that Deputy Prime Minister Murray spoke at a certain forum and he said that there, were, there was exploration going on in Guyana's waters and there was interest and we could be discovering oil anytime. In 1991, he said that in open forum at which people who are still alive today were present, at which what he said, what they said was, ch was challenged because he was speaking at a forum in the United States mm -hmm. and they were challenged in 1991, that's before the transition, that's the year before the transition. And what he said was challenged, but not that, that part that he said, that there was exploration going on in Guyana's waters was not challenged. Okay, and, and I, I think you might see that tomorrow. Ah. I, I hope so. So that, that, that <coughs> raises a serious number of questions. Now, for the benefit of our viewers, we don't want to get too many um, arcane kind of discussions. Arcane. We, we want <laughs> an obtuse um, type of discussion. What can we say? Why do we make this grand um, conclusion about this contract? One, that it has caused material harm to the country, that it has deprived the country of probably billions of dollars, billions of United States dollars, that it's probably the result of grand corruption or grand incompetence. And there is illegality 
at the root of the Exxon contract. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, where do we start? Go, go ahead, Troy. Uh, well, why we, why we conclude those things? Or I mean, everything that you said there uh, um, is correct. Um, but we're well, I'm only quoting your own. Yes, <laughs> about <laughs> correct about what we what we said. <laughs> but we're concluding, um, and we're leading the public to those um, to understanding those issues in the hope that they get a clearer understanding of what it is um, that the, our government has signed on our behalf. Um, ultimately, if you have a government that is breaking the laws of the country in its uh, collaboration or in its uh, conducting business with foreign entities how can we expect those entities to now respect our laws how can we expect them to abide by the laws um, in our country and then we also have to ask why is it that our politicians seem so willing to break the laws and that's where you must wonder whether corruption is involved that they are so willing to break the laws and to such an extent i mean the law says 60 blocks yes for contract per license per license mm -hmm. you have somewhere close to 600 Th that's not you know uh, applying a discretion and saying a few more here for this reason or what's that you have basically obliterated any kind of meaning that the the, the law would have had in what so th the question is why why are we doing that what what's the meaning of a block? What what's practically what's there are block? two there are two, as we said in our first first article, and yes. that's unfair to ask the public to remember yes, <laughs> a yes. year ago. That's why I'm asking. But you there that. are two there are two concepts um, of a block. One is the graticular block, which is a concept used. It's like it's analogous to um, a square foot uh -huh. if you're going to lease um, your building. Yes, it's a it's the basic unit mm -hmm. of seabed. Mm -hmm. Okay. And mm -hmm. it is described in terms of latitude and longitude. Yes. Many countries in, in around here, Guyana and Trinidad, I think it's five minutes of latitude and that's, five minutes of, of, of yes. longitude. Yeah. As you go, depending on which part of the earth, they will use a different uh, 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 latitude longitude yes, system. Yes. And then you have a license block. A license block is a group of those yes. combi put together. Mm -hmm. And it is usually on a diagram so that the before you issue anything, companies that are countries that are managed well have a diagram and they say, listen, we are about to put an auction. These are the blocks that we are interested in putting an auction this time. And you have a group of them and you see a diagram. It looks like a jigsaw puzzle. Some people say, say well, it's, it's more, um, I, I, I don't know, but the habit is put a, a five-sided figure made up. So you have a license block made up of particular blocks. Now, you talk about just blocks. Mm -hmm. In fact, the country is divided into blocks. They're there. Yes. What do you mean, well, what, you what can, you you mean can by that? No, no, no. No, no, no. I'm telling you. No, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What are you talking about? That under the law, what is called the chief inspector was had an obligation to map out mm -hmm. Correct. the country and the territory. When we say territory here, we mean both onshore and, and offshore. offshore. Absolutely. Yes. And that has been done. So it is, it is out of that that you're supposed to start making, okay, we will do it here, and we'll do this here. and do well, that, That's how it's done. Well, you, there, is a, there is a map. You know a little more than I do in that regard what what the way you put it suggests that the whole the entire country yes. is supposed to have been zoned off in terms of yes maybe what i do know is that as far as the government's intentions are concerned they should have indicated as part of an overall petroleum policy that these this area here made up of these blocks is what we will be putting on license on land and this one he will be doing on, on, the, in, on the ocean bed. And so we are saying, I think in your first article you said, TG noted that 60 of these would be 5,000 
and 73 square kilometers. Right. Now, what in fact did Janet Jagan and then Raphael Trotman give under this petroleum agreement, 1999-2016? Well, um, let me see. You're directing my attention to um, that 60 of these would be 5,000 centuries square, yes, probably more than yes. six times the king. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think the best way to um, put it is that the 60 block maximum is 5,073 mm. square, square, square kilometers. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, let us suppose that there is a diagram with a 60 block area. One, one, one. Perhaps this, this, this is six, yes. this is a square. Yes. Good. So what she did is to put uh, five, uh, uh, 500 and, 500 and, um, it's about uh, 500 and, Seventeen. Uh, is it? Is it, it, it what? 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 Is it five? Five hundred and something. Um, instead of the, they said it was ten times. It was not yeah. ten times. Mm -hmm. It was not um, ten times. And it was. It was. It was uh, about six times the uh, area. It was about uh, uh, six times. What, what? What? Whatever we said here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. So now, yeah. why is that so important? Well, it is so important. Why? Because, and this is the critical part of it. What should have been given over according to the law? Each should have had a single license. Um, go ahead. Go ahead. Each should have been issued each under what? A each what? Each block contract, each contract, contract block. block. So and a contract block meaning a contract it block. It would be a grouping of particular of blocks. Yes. Up, up to that six limit. Up to a maximum yeah. of six. six yeah. So let us suppose that you wanted to be generous and stretch it to the limit. So she had a limit of only a 60 block maximum. Unfortunately, as I said, it is a little confusing because they use graticular blocks like in square foot. Mm -hmm. And a group of these graticular blocks as a licensed block. Mm -hmm. So when I, say li when I say block now, I'm using license. 60 graticular blocks as the maximum that she could use. On a single one. On a single one. And she put all of these to an area of 26,000, yes, 26,800 square kilometers yeah, under a single agreement. Mm. So what should have been uh, six different uh, licenses, six, six, different, or, yeah. six different licenses mm. Mm -hmm. were put under one license and, and, that in and itself one agreement. Has some consequences. Well, I'm asking what are they, why is that so important? Okay. So when you're going to do a license, for example, we, we got the other day um, a signing bonus. Now, if every time you do a new license, there would be something like we that. We got it much longer than the other day. But, um, <laughs> yes, but if every time you do a new license, there is a signing bonus. Yes. By doing one, you already would have lost out. There is also provision for uh, relinquishing um, blocks if you've had it for a period and you have not uh, drilled there or you just had it you know you, you can't just hog the hog because the you get you get um an expiration under yes. the act you yeah. you have an expiration um, permit or an expiration yeah. license you have it for four years mm -hmm. then you have it then you get two three years yeah. extension and after each point, you have to relinquish. Yes. Yeah. None of this was done. Uh, none of that can no. happen because you have the whole thing. <laughs> well, 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 that's two, two different things. You could, you, you could have had a relinquishment mm. if they had honored that after every five years you have to relinquish that a part. They could have done that, well, but they made a nullity of that clause. But what we are saying is this. Here's the part. It's not just relinquishment. That it doesn't take... If oil, now that oil has been discovered, that's yes. the problem. Now that oil has been discovered in one area, 
the surrounding blocks. The surrounding blocks go up so that if they're to be put on auction, they go up in value. Yes. yes. People will want to bid more for them. You will get a bigger signing bonus. But because you have lumped all of these blocks together, there is ne nearby, is nearby, you got to go out. Uh, uh, Ultra deep. <laughs> you got to go far out. Because Whereas the blocks one of them, here is where the, the, the discovery is. If you had maintained the, the, the separate licenses, these would have been separate and up now for the government to issue out for separate license and you put a signing bonus. But because all of them are together, you have one single agreement on them. Of course. And, and if, overall, if it, it, um, it basically kills competition. Um, if you own all, if you have well, access to Well, we've been swallowed up by Exxon yes. Mobil. That's so, what so has yes. happened. Yeah. What people don't realize at this stage of our development, there is only one single we, company that has found all and mm -hmm. that determines the future of our country. Yeah. It's almost like, it's like being captured, basically. Um, well, well, the, well, well there's a, that has to be modified now that we have heard about JHI and the other company sit next to the uh, uh, yes. Exxon uh, Starbuck block. That is about, um, looks like about 60% of this huge. Uh, yes. So well, that, that, that's. SO exploration <coughs> controls, either by ownership or by farming in, mm. about 55% of all the blocks that have been allocated so far. I That's see. how much we have given away. I see. Now, there's another implication. Please tell me if I'm... Because you've obviously been studying the same. When you give the blocks in such sizes, how do you do ring, ring fencing? Ring fencing operates that, look, if you got a small block, your expenses and your revenue are matched for this. If you remove ring fencing, or if you remove ring fencing, or if you enlarge this thing by six times more, where does ring fencing? Because a company could be getting income here, yeah. but because it wants to reduce profits, yeah. it goes and spends towards another area. Yeah. No, I, I, I don't understand your logic. Because the ring fencing will apply whether it is a small ring or a big, ri a, a, a big ring. Well, can you tell me whether this contract allows for ring fencing, given to, to limit your, your liability or whatever it is to a smaller area? But but that but we don't have a smaller area in this sense. Yeah. And remember, Fred and, and and Troy, we have surprisingly we have those issues in the Income Tax Act. But guess what? We have said the Income Tax Act doesn't apply. So all the rules that would protect you, that look, if you can't go so as to minimize revenue, you make money, you spend, you can't do that. The tax laws, the Income Tax Act provides that. But we have waived that. What, now, what? so you have... <laughs> I, I have a slight concern. You say she. We say, are you trying to say that Trotman is not equally guilty of whatever terms you use, these grand terms? No, no, no. Hold on, hold on. Let, 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 me, let, me, let, me, make, let, me, let me say again. We, if somebody can give us another theory, it's either got to be Grand corruption or grand incompetence? No, no, my, my question is, is it, oh, you, you kept, you said she. We know Janet Jagan. Mm. That's 1999. 1999. Yes. But here it is, um, 2016, mm -hmm. 17 years later, mm -hmm. you have more information, more knowledge. Yeah. You're supposed to be this grand coalition. Yeah. That's another grand for you, Fredo. <laughs> <laughs> so, so oh, the series actually will, will talk about both of the, the ministers. And there are certain points at which you would be referring specifically to 1999, and then you might see she pops up. But um, I think more often than not, when we speak about Trotman, his name is mentioned in the. But in but understand if you, you see you, you see we have to be careful what we really um, uh, apportioning um, and what we when we say grand corruption, we are talking about the fact that look 
these contracts were kept hidden. Yes. There had to be some reason why they were kept hidden. And then they, they, they weren't intended for the public to see. We are talking about, we will point out later on, that there seems to be a, a studied aversion of the gays from the Procurement Act. The Procurement Act in every country applies to petroleum. Well, in so 1999, there was no Procurement Act. That's a fact. But, but there was a practice, as you correctly drew the reference, the relationship between seabed and land, there was a practice of giving out auctions for land yes. before the procurement act. Mm -hmm. So you had to have made, it was not a case where you were doing something different and you had to make an effort to bring in auctions. It was a case where the country had a habit of using auctions and we and you set it aside. You, you set it aside. Mm -hmm. As you were also talking about the income tax um, laws, the question is why, why were so, why were so many um, deviations from what would have been expected to be the practice why w why were there so many um, resulting in what we have now I want to I, I want to go on um, the the act provides for the minister and when we say the act we mean um, petroleum exploration and production act okay it gives the power of the minister the power and at the time of 1999 Janet Jagan held ministerial responsibility for petroleum so yes. in addition to being president she was the minister of petroleum yes. were these people acting legally and legitimately in signing these contracts no no you have got to, you got to explain that the, the, you are explaining it. what do you mean why what is the distinct you distinguish between you use two words legally and legitimately yes. you have to explain the difference for us well legally means in accordance with the law mm -hmm. legitimate is it proper is is it fishy um is, is it in any way um within the norms well it couldn't be because nowhere else within the norms Within the norms, yeah. nowhere else have we seen any mm -hmm. country make wholesale issuance of blocks. Okay, well then what you seem to be answering, Fred, is that the answer is yes, it was neither legal nor legitimate. Well, you yeah. have to make that and conclusion as a lawyer. <laughs> I can only tell you the facts as we've seen. We have seen nowhere else and, uh, and where a country yeah. has done that. And on the, on the legal side of Yes, on the legal side. Um, that should be pretty clear. The, the point that has been raised in terms of the size of the area um, involved in the single contract is that there, uh, the minister has discretion. Yes. Um, the, the minister can have discretion to determine um, what might be um, special circumstances. Yes. This first article, we said that the discretion was used improperly, but we didn't go into the details of that. But the the way discretion is described, it's like if you have some operation here, you you have oil here, or you found something there, and there is a, a little area beside here. It might not be attractive for somebody. You can add that to and we expand it. So it goes beyond the, the maximum specified in the law, but not to the extent that we have in here. The argument people have made is that the law specifies that the minister has discretion, and somehow that means the minister has discretion to do whatever the minister wishes to do. And from a legal standpoint, we address that. Today. That doesn't stand up. I think that one will be out today. Oh, okay. It's, I it's I today. thought I saw it today. You saw it today. You saw it today. Yes, yes. yes, it was in today's So you get you get you get what we're saying. What we said today for the benefit of the public, because you would have no, you would have read there, is that there is no such thing as a discretion unfettered. that is unfettered. Mm -hmm. You can miss it and do without restriction. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 although the the regulation thirteen was interpreted to mean that. And by the current minister, he said it's, it's, it, it, it's legal. Yeah. And that's what he said. He was referring to our article. He said he noticed that some people are saying, but Regulation 13 covers him. No, it does not give any minister or any 
person acting on behalf of, uh, of, of a government or, or administrator any unlimited leeway to do what he wants. And coming to 2016, I can understand why the minister found that argument attractive. Um, because the minister didn't take the opportunity to correct that. In the, in Which is what he ought to have done. That's what he ought to if have you done. Come so later he has to argue that it was correct in the first place. And that's, that's the argument he put forward. Has he attempted, let alone convince the Guyanese public, the Guyanese, that special circumstances in fact existed for him to breach this 60 block um, prescription in the law. Hold on. When you say for him to breach the 60 block, yes. you mean for him to maintain the 60 block breach? Because it was already breached in 1999. Yeah, well, but, but what is the Chris question? Is making the point, is this is a different contract. A different contract. So, look, we, we got to see with that. Let, he is let holding let, that it's let a let different contract. This. Let me tell so, you this. So when he speaks, you, that's coming out. <laughs> let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. And Fred, I think you, you, you've read this. We know Exxon knew that their contract was rapidly coming to an end. They ought not to have been given another contract. How many times are you going to give people, bear in mind, there's, apart from the Petroleum Exploration and Production Act, there's a Product Petroleum Act. Yeah. That act has two sections. You know what's the most important one? That the petroleum resources, I think they said hydrocarbon resources, belong yes. to the people of this country. Yes. Now, Exxon screwed up the first contract with the force majeure and then the PPP government gave waivers on um on all these all these um relinquishment yes. of blocks. Yes. All that the PPP did. Yeah. The PPP is not innocent in no, this. No, we're, we're not dealing with any innocent. But, but, so. but this go this government knew all of that. Surely your responsibility no. is to correct the errors of the past. Yes, yes. Sure. But, but I must confess that, uh, I, I, and we don't want to speak where, because I, I, I wouldn't want to represent as some people are saying that this thing is so complicated. But we have focused on the areas we are sure about. When you say that this um, you're talking about, I'm, I'm speaking about maintaining the, and you were talking about a different um, contract. I have noticed, and some people are pointing out that, listen, if you give a company X area to do your exploration and they find petroleum, you're not going to take it and hand it to somebody else. So that there is a connection between what you have awarded a company in terms of the license and who you're going to give for production. You see, you see... I, we are not... Hold on. We are not experts on that. So I, I don't want to... to I know. Really but but the, point of, the point about this is to suggest mm -hmm. that because they had found it... Look, the, 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 the legislation in some ways is fairly simple. You make an application, as, as TG has correctly pointed out, you make an application, you meet the terms and conditions and requirements yes. set out in the Act and in the petroleum regulations right. of 1986, yeah. which says, for example, you have to show that you've got the financial means, yeah. which is what Kaicho News is, is, with the new, is with the more recent on legitimately about mm -hmm. with the GHI um, and the ra ra ratio Yeah, contract. that appears to have been breached. And that you must have provision for local content. Mm -hmm. You must. This is not if or but. Trotman has told the people, oh, you take a year, you come with us later on. Well, well, that's a, that's a, serious, <coughs> excuse me, a serious problem because as it appears to us, not only did Mr. Um, did the people who signed the contract, let's take about the names, whoever signed this contract, not only did they think they had unfettered discretion, but in one clause of the contract, it appears as though in this new contract, Discretion has been used to fetter the minister 
in favor of of of, of it. so i must be not surprised you are, you are talking about something that is even lower than that yeah. we have it's it is worse you see and i want to give this example mm. let us say you and i enter into an arrangement look i'm giving you 10 years to carry out certain works on my property state's property you dilly dally then in injustice to Exxon, there was the issue with Suriname yeah. and force majeure kicked in, but <laughs> the period, the effective period of 10 years had expired. Mm -hmm. Had expired, they had not applied at that stage for a production license. Mm -hmm. All of that is in breach of the law, and I'm, I'm sure, I mean, this, this excellent series, and somebody called me this morning and said, Chris, you must read. Um, well, transparency Institute. Well, Chris. Somebody else will be addressed. <laughs> Chris, uh, yeah, you see, uh, we don't want to anticipate what we're going to, what's, going to, what's going to come, uh, you know, and, and rob the suspense. I think it should be out tomorrow. You'll see a little bit more about it. But you're not uh, here I, to tell people newspapers. <laughs> no, no. But what I want to you see. Know, you know, the, you know the, in the old days, these, these boys read all about it? Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I must what, have, we didn't get anything on the table from Starbrook News. Uh, <laughs> what, what I want to ask. You got it over the table? <laughs> Neither. <laughs> What I want to ask about the force majeure that kicked in as a result of the actions of Suriname is whether the area that Exxon um, um, had access to under the, the contract was it all in the area that no, Suriname No, sir, was exactly. So, that, so, some point. You, you, you are here. This is, this is all your area. All of this. This is Suriname here. This is Venezuela here. Um, all of this is midway. Even if you have an issue with Suriname at this point, well, why could you this? use here? Yeah. Because you have massive blocks. Sometimes I think that everybody else knows that we dumb. That's, that's what I think. And we haven't caught up to, the, to, to that reality. Mm -hmm. Because to me, that is clear. And I don't have to know anything about uh, oil exploration and all of that. I know that Suriname's claim could not extend to Venezuela, clearly. clearly. So if they have an issue here and you have all of this this area, why does that stop everything for you? So my view, my view is they did not deserve this and they knew this. Because when Noel Dennison from the GGMC, yes, head of the petroleum unit, went to discuss something with them, they said, they did, we don't want to discuss this, we want to discuss a new contract. Mm -hmm. They bullied us. Mm -hmm. And I... I mean, I, I notice you people talk about qualified legal luminaries. Um, this seems to be more than undue influence. This is duress. They're serious. And you, I would say you're quite right that there are lots of legal issues um, that render this contract, as you people have said, uh, irretrievably flawed. Irretrievably flawed. And we are saying, and I'm glad you come to this point now because we run out of time. Where it comes to the law, you see you talking about how many... Uh, it doesn't take much of a genius. All you have to do is to look at the laws and see how many of them are broken. The constitution of the country is also breached. In what sense? In well, what sense? Because the readers need to know this. When, when you are Sorry, the, views, the, yes. procur the procurement, in, in first of all, in, yeah. in, in relation to procurement, you see, uh, uh, Article 212 EE, it says the functions, oh, in the Procurement Act, Section 25.1, subject to subsection 2, public tendering is mandatory. Once you're above a certain limit, right? Whether goods or services, mm -hmm. and an economic activity is either good or a service. You have anything else? It can be nothing. It can be nothing else. It can be a combination, and the, so that's the public. That's the the the, the, the uh, procurement act. But let's go to the constitution. The functions of the PPC, the Public Procurement Commission, are to monitor and review the functioning of all public procurement systems, to ensure that they are in accordance with law and such policy guidelines as may be determined by the National Assembly. Promote awareness of the rules, procedures, etc., etc. C. Safeguard the national interest in public <coughs> procurement matters. 
having due regard to any international obligations, monitor and review, etc., etc., and report the need for any legislation to the National Assembly. Then you have 221, 212W. There shall be a PPC, purpose of which is to monitor public procurement and the procedures, therefore, in order to ensure that what? That the procurement of goods, services, and execution of works are conducted in a fair, equitable, transparent, competitive, and cost-effective manner according to law and such policy guidelines as we determine. So that puts a role in the National Assembly in the Constitution in terms of, of public procurement responsibility. So it's both, it's both the Constitution and the, and the Procurement Act. And the Procurement Act. This and is why we say it ain't easy to fix. They can't go and do a, a, a thing in, yeah. in thing to fix it without the, the glare of the, the public. And then that doesn't apply only to Exxon. Mm -hmm. It would apply to all the all, contracts. All the, all the contracts. Yes. So what we are saying, that's where we, we're ending up, and we bring it substance to show that there on, there's only one way out for this country. All these contracts have got to be redone in the glare of the public. Any backroom deals, this country is lost. Well, you are saying any backroom deals, but the Granger administration has said we signed the contract and we're not reopening any discussion on them. Uh, Mr. Well, Granger. The, the Guyanese public <laughs> ha has a duty to remind our politicians that they're working on our behalf. And in fact, they get their mandate from us. Um, and so the government cannot hand down something like that, dictate that this thing will not be reopened if that is the desire of the population. But if it's, if it's um, as you um, using the advice and support of qualified legal luminaries, I don't know if you've got some unqualified legal luminaries as well. Perhaps, I and don't who know. Those, who those might be. I don't, I don't know. want to, I don't want to cast we, are, we, are, we are seeing some fun. We are having some fun with our constitution and the CCJ. <laughs> gonna, so maybe they are qualified and unqualified legal luminaries. Who am I to say? <laughs> um, how then are you going to fix this? Listen, the president has to do what the president has to do. We at Transparency will do what we have to do. But Our the president job, must also follow the Constitution. No, we can't make the president follow the Constitution, but we will do what we have to do. The president can say what he, in his good judgment, have what he has to say. <laughs> you asked a question earlier about, um, and uh, going off of what we need to do, um, about uh, whether they have convinced us about special circumstances. Yes. And as I was thinking about it, um, the special circumstance that they cited was that we needed some kind of protection um, from Exxon in the sense that there is the border issue. And by having this particular um, company there, it can uh, sort of stabilize the situation. Um, and. I think tomorrow we are going to explain to the, the public something about that. And what we would basically show there is that if in fact Exxon, uh, you brought up the force majeure thing. Yes. If in fact that's what they were supposed to, to do and that's why you broke the law, <laughs> how, how, how come they claim in force majeure? Well, it, it seems like Exxon doesn't know that that's what it was supposed to do. The claim force majeure in respect of the... Well, well the, the entire the entire Yes, contract. but remember the special circumstances. Yes. Is that they will help us to deal, to stabilize against that specific There was supposed kind of to be some kind of a security insurance against Venezuela. Yeah. That is why they wanted this big, powerful con 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 uh, company, not so? Yes. And then you tuck your tail between your leg when, <laughs> when Suriname says something. Now, you people 
talk about this signing bonus. Mm -hmm. The government seems to have explained the signing bonus, former Foreign Minister Greenwich, that this signing bonus was really a legal fund to protect Exxon's access to the blocks. No, 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 that's not what I recall him saying. Uh, I, I, re say? I, re I saw that accusation from somebody in, uh, in mm -hmm. Suriname saying Exxon is giving us money to do that. That's that's what what go ahead. No, 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 no. The money, no, hold on, hold on. No, hold on, friend. Let me just make this point why uh -huh. I said that. Because it is said that is why the money is, was, was there. That's not what I recall. They okay. said they put, this, put it aside for that. Like, yes. No, 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 no. That's not what I recall. Let me make sure I get it clear. Yeah. Sure. My recollection is different from yours. Okay. And uh, my recollection is that what they said is that that money was being set aside for the legal defense at the uh, IC, ICG or the very that is what I recall. Yeah, yeah but yeah. So they, didn't, they, didn't okay, say, they didn't say that okay, Exxon give wanna. them to do that. They said yeah. that they set it aside. They reserved that they yes. set it aside yeah. for that purpose. That's a different yeah. story. Um, but so, I see where you're so going this with that because I battle with that as well. I know what they've said, but I, you know, I mean, often it, that comes back to my mind. Like, what? Because they did it in secret kept it outside of the consolidated fund um why was the all of that necessary if you decided to set aside this money for this purpose why was the you know i battle with that issue sometimes but but this given what you people have said and again you've done some excellent research i'm saying that because i myself have done some research and i think you've you in some ways you've really ex exceeded in for example the signing bonuses now we are then we are only pretending this government Trotman Jordan Granger Greenwich are only pretending we got a signing bonus we got a legal fund to protect <laughs> <laughs> and when you talk about what you call it um, grand incompetence it's monumental stupidity <laughs> if not worse well i i i because I, why would you do that which kind of person with a modicum of common sense would do that when you're talking we have lost billions of dollars if you were to take the comparisons yeah. with some of the gulf of mexico signing bonuses or the one closest to us, Brazil. Brazil. 2.3 billion uh, uh, reals, which was about um, nearly 1.8 billion um, US dollars. And all because the blocks were close to the result that were uh, uh, in Brazil, where the children had been found. So proximity is a value. It's like if you have a gold shout in a yes, particular, yes. everybody wants a land nearby. But if you take a big enough gold shout, they ain't got no nearby, you have got everything. Yes. Yeah. And we take that. These same <laughs> gentlemen take that and say, look, don't worry, give me $80 million. We, as everybody said, that's an odd sounding number. Yeah, yeah. You don't usually but call I, it. I think it. it does. It does lead to the kinds of questions you're asking, um, and that's why um, the we're saying this this whole thing is is either grand corruption or grand incompetence because um, you don't know until you know. But when you examine what what has happened, it leads to these type of questions. Well, it's 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 not just that it was it was born in secrecy. It was born in secrecy, and even now. I think you have mentioned there's some kind of a bridging agreement yes. that we still which, can't which see. We have not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yes. so it's in somebody's back pocket, hidden somewhere. By the way, by the way, we've not seen the production licenses. We've not seen the. We've seen the agreement. As I said, under the agreement, there is provision for licenses the exploration licenses and the production licenses has anyone outside of this close group of persons described here has anyone seen those things have has this government released that information so we can see what conditions for example you see the license 
is different from the agreement. The license is, this is what we're giving you. This is how you have Correct. to operate. And these are the conditions that you must meet. Right. We don't know any of those things. Right. But it says also in the law, in the legislation for the license, it's subject of petroleum agreement. Yes. In several places. Yes. So in other words, while the license had that shape, it can be modified in the agreement. Because it's subject to no, what you agree. No, but, but you have to see the agreement. Absolutely. Well, we are also seeing in the Constitution transparent. Is yes, there, there is a requirement. And that is one of the things I've, I've been watching, listening to some of the, 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 the pleadings in the, uh, the CCJ case, where the um, CCJ seems to be saying, but your Constitution seems to provide for so, so, so. So I am watching with interest to see what this will mean if the laws, some of the laws that have been passed in Parliament are not hostile to the Constitution. Now, one of the things I want to get in before you, 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 the program ends, because I see we're running out of time, Chris, is just that what we're talking about secrecy here. I want the, the, the listeners to understand that all this obsession with secrecy is really unnecessary unless it serves somebody's purpose. And it's listen, so listen, listen to what you have here. Listen to what you have in Little Sao Tome. You, they have said, this is the law 16 of 2009, a petroleum contract shall not be granted in respect of an area. Which country? Which law? Yes, uh, South, South, tell me a little tiny okay. country. Yes, yes. Has been considered to all applicants made and in compliance with the terms and conditions of, of the auction. It says that there is going to be uh, transparency. All contracts are subject to the principle of transparency. The principle of transparency implies the publicity of and public access to all information in accordance with the oil revenue law. All contracts of the principle of transparency shall be published by the public registration and information office as required by Article 18 of the oil. They are doing everything transparently. But all this secrecy nonsense and you're I telling me that is necessary. Let me just read it's an one obsession. more thing from that. We got, we got three minutes. Say yes. quickly. It says confidentiality clauses or other mechanisms included in oil contracts or in any other transaction instrument concerning an oil revenue or oil resources that prevent or attempt to prevent access to documents and information pursuant to Article 17 of this law shall be null and void and contrary absolutely. to the Absolutely. That's it. Absolutely. But, but listen, you talk about grand corruption and grand incompetence. <laughs> and again, I talked about, I, uh, Raphael Trapman sat next to me and he was defending, he misreads or, or misleads, whichever one, the, the confidentiality agreement clause I think it's section four of the Petroleum Exploration Production Act that simply says you can't share is data with B. It doesn't say you can't publish agreements. Mm -hmm. And this nonsense that he peddled and his government peddled for so long, what have they lost by the agreement becoming public? Mm. Well, you, you've got people almost giving a roadmap to 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 getting a better deal, to strengthening everything. I mean, people, we, this sort of discussion that we have about it is what citizens should be engaged in, and I think the country has gained a lot. I mean, we must thank him for publishing it. You know why it was published? After the grand stupidity <laughs> of sending yeah. a letter copy to five people saying hide the, the, um, the, the, the bonus. Yeah. I see. That's why. And that brought about the pressure that, look, we want to see what else is in the contract. Okay. Gentlemen, we are almost running out of time. Um, this is an extremely important issue for Guyana. We have issues we want to discuss. I'm particularly concerned to hear your luminary's views on <laughs> what, what is called the stabilization or the stability clause that says no government for as long as Exxon Mobil oh, wow. is here on that massive block, no government can tell them anything about taxes or any laws well, that are adverse to their interests. Well, you will see in yeah, one yeah. of our articles that they cannot carry this thing to any arbitration because the arbitration requires for the laws to be honored in the country and international practice, and all of them are breaching the contract. And I can't understand how we would sign something like so that. So that's an answer, partial answer to your question. It can't be carried anywhere. 
Well, I'm looking for the rest of the answer. <laughs> yes, so, sir. And I'm, I'm assuring you that you're welcome for further discussions after you've published these. Yes, uh, sir. I think you've done a good job to help Sabu News. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was that was all intention. We have a long-standing column okay. with, with. And us. may I say that tomorrow marks what? Thirty-nine years since Walter Rodney was killed in some of the most mysterious circumstances, mm. and was found. Um, it was found that the government of the day had a hand in his death. I don't know what the WPA will be doing about the thirty-ninth anniversary of his assassination. But let us not forget that one of our greatest Guyanese ever died 39 years ago fighting for our cause. Let's keep fighting. Thank you and good night.